easily? Is that where you're at right now? You don't know? I got the shrug. It's fine. This is fine. Thanks. Good luck, Kira. Okay, so you said pass is the lowest GPM of the day. If they lose, that's the his prediction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So one interesting thing right off the back is seconds. that normally uh, Miggle is Sigma's offlane player and Sock is their carry player. It looks like they have swapped things up. Miggle's going to be playing the carry like in this case and Sock on the Batrider. I don't think I've ever seen Miggle play Batrider. Maybe that's why he's not playing the Batrider. He's a Slark player, man. What's that's wrong all, with Slark player? That's all he's got. He's just a Slark I mean, every, player. Every time, every time you say, oh, he's a Slark player, I don't know if that's supposed to be insult or anything, because you just don't back it up. It's like, it's self-explanatory. Oh, Honestly, I actually kind of suck at Slark, because I always miss the leap, like, I every time. Well, you're better than Loda, because Loda today missed a leap, and... It wasn't great. It was just like, the guy was sprouted. <laughs> we ain't moving. You, know what, you know what happens, though, is people have a tendency to click, like, on or near the trees instead of just oh, clicking the in front of it. Yeah, yeah and it turns okay. you. So, I can, I guess I can kind of see that. I wish it didn't work that way, though. I wish it would just run you in a straight line until you hit a wall. Yeah. And then you would just have to manually move around, you know? I think that's, that, like, makes the most sense, but... Do you remember when people were invis in, oh, no. uh, in corridors, and it used to make you freak out before you even walked into it? Yeah, that was annoying. That was crazy annoying because of the way that they like detected collisions so yeah. you would actually move in a different direction. But it's almost like you could feel them in the bush. Yeah. So bottom lane, it's not really great oh, for Universe. No. He's, he's having a tough time. It's bad. It's real bad. But he lives. He, he went Iron Shell first. I usually get screamed at by my teammates if I do that. Yeah, but he goes Iron Shell first in this lane because there's no real way for them to uh, to disable him that hard. Like, they're going to have poison. Actually, no, he doesn't even have poison touch. He has Shadow Wave. So, yeah, there you go. That's but, pretty I mean, much why he skilled it. Or did he do it pre-seeing the lane? I guess you expect the uh, the defensive trial lane. But in any case, chilling touch is really what made it so close in terms of getting that kill. Which is actually insane damage output on three heroes. It used to work on Illusions, Chilling Touch, didn't it? Does it? It used to, it doesn't anymore. No, it doesn't work on Illusions. I don't believe that. That would be ridiculous. Because you need to be able to pick something like Naga Siren and just... No, it doesn't now, but I'm pretty sure at one stage it did. I don't know, man, that sounds bonkers. It's an But this is Dota. I've seen worse things happen. I've seen a bug with United We Stand and there being like 100 Meepos in the screen. Did you see one where you could move your fountain? Certainly not. Yeah. Like, if you can move the fountain, what can't you do? Here, right? Yeah, on Outshaker. Yeah, okay. That's pretty bonkers. You just move the fountain up your middle lane, and yeah. suddenly the other team just can't do anything. <laughs> so, well, forward! You know, I actually miss the fact that you could destroy fountains. In Dota 1, you just like, yeah. win so hard, you blow up their fountain. I don't think I've ever done that in Dota 1. Double There's damage. a professional team that actually did it. I think it was like Zenith or something. Camp their base after they destroy the fountain. In any case, looks like we have a double damage Earthshaker running on the top lane. Sock? Might be a little bit of trouble. He does have Firefly, so Ooh, yeah, he, he does yeah. sure. lift off and yeah. Fun. I guess to be fair, it didn't matter. Yeah. So let's talk about the matchups, just because I don't think we've actually walked or ran through them, I should say. But it's Fata on Invoker versus Artezi's Tinker. This is a matchup that I think honestly is a bit difficult for a Quaswex Invoker, just because your base damage is pretty low mm -hmm. in comparison to what a Tinker has. And even though you might not necessarily get harassed out of lane, you're going to have a really hard time actively going for oh, Fata in trouble. The first blood comes out, PPD comes in from the side, blood. snipes. A very, very nice block there on middle lane. And EG, getting that first blood. Radiant that's the kind of start you want on uh, Tinker. Like, oh, you need them boots to travel. That's like your core item, Soul Ring boots to travel. Yeah. If you get that fast, you can just control the whole map at the start again. Yeah, change something you brought up is, you know, when you go for that Quas Wex build, you generally shouldn't get ganked, but when PP gets that nice roam, gets the perfect block, you know, easy that laser. That was beautiful, though. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't just PPD's perfect block. It was RTZ also laying down a bunch of physical harass against the Quas region and then finishing Radiant's off with that two points in laser. South's going to cancel, unfortunately, for him, but he's already doing the bottle crow. And if you ever watch RTZ's stream, that should be a very, very familiar sight. This man throws a lot. The thing is, if you're playing mid and you're not an invoker, you kind of have to bottle crow. That's just it, because Too most bad. of the heroes on the map so don't necessarily sad. need the courier in the first like five to seven minutes of the game, typically, unless somebody's going Midas, and I don't think Darkseer the bounty hunter is going to be going lane. Midas. Well, sure, but he'll only need it like once, right? And then you can just bottle crow the other time, so you can just go for the runes, assuming where you, you know where the supports are on yeah. the other team. So I think for Artizi, it's going to be quite easy actually to uh, to bottle crow this game, or at least maintain some semblance of rune control. Actually, what's your thought about Invoker getting a bottle in the mid lane? I don't really think it's necessary as Quaswex. 
Um, typically, like what Dyer's I do at least on Invoker is I go is two costs attack. and four wex. That way, anytime you EMP, you pretty much get the mana cost back for EMPing. Mm -hmm. And that way, you don't really need Illusion. the bottom for mana regen. And since you have quas, as long as for you're not HP actively regen. trading, you just never have to leave the lane. So. Okay. What I did a few times on Invoker is I stacked the medium camp and got the, you know, the f the four camp with the all of mana. What are the, the... The big camps? No, it's... Satyrs, right? The Satyrs, yeah. Ah. And um, then all you EMP it, and then you get all the mana back. Yeah, pretty nice. Speaking of EMP, RTZ takes one to the face, but... I mean, at this point, harassing RTZ is not going to accomplish much. And you're not really going to kill him just with the Invoker alone, so... What is Fata's plan here? Is he just going to trade last hit? I mean, that's really all he can do. He can try to counter gank for any tower dives, and he can sit here and he can try to get some levels, finish his phase boots, which I think are actually coming out right now, and just get some levels because invoker even if you're not exhort is still very level reliant doesn't matter what build you go you really really do need levels do you think being tinker as dire is harder than as radiant because of the ancient stacking i think being uh tinker on radiant is way easier yeah, yeah because you can actually stack the ancients yourself without even leaving the lane if you just march uh there's a little edge that you can use yeah, if you right grind out there yeah and you can edge. just yeah, he's a there, but taking some damage middle, EMP, cold snap gonna be used, he's gonna be in some trouble, Fata wants to go for the kill, he does have phase, and the wolf gets the last hit, Miggle with the, uh, the downtown assistance, yeah. very nicely done. I mean, wolves now get invisibility at level 3 instead of level 4, so you could do that much, much sooner level 5 versus level 7, and uh, they definitely do AD cold snap damage, attack. and of course with the phase mobility, was able to track down Tinker, nicely done. It's really important that Fata gets that kill too, because I believe he was still in experience range, because now he's halfway to level 8, and uh, Arteezy is actually almost a full level behind him now, which is a bit troublesome. And speaking of trouble, he's going to spot out PPD yes, in the river, and PPD is actually going to take the regen. I probably would have saved it, to be honest, especially considering he has two clarities, even though he expended that fissure, but it's a small thing. It's not huge. Uh, getting regen on Tinker when you have rearm, you just sit in middle and just like press your spells. Well, he doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah he doesn't so. have rearm yet, but if you did have it, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, when the man is bottom crawling all day, you, you got to give the support some love. It's like, I yeah, I think he had full mana, actually. Not. Yeah. No, he fissure first. Yeah, yeah, but he had full mana before. <laughs> I think he was just preemptively fissuring to make sure that the invoker wasn't coming because they don't have any vision. There it is again. Yeah. Fata actually throws another cold snap. The wolves are there too. Uh -oh. Look at the damage. Damn. He oh. can't even get a spell off. There's three points in boss right now. And I think that is just enough to actually stun off. Bot lane though. Kill bottom, yeah. yeah, it looks like he might get a double kill. It looks like Pasta is using that grave trying to save himself. Meanwhile, Universe. Very low as well. He's trying to outrun this. He does have a teleport scroll. Where's that tornado from long range? There is there's nothing because uh well invoker is on the mid lane. <laughs> I, I, I saw you thought Miggle was yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought Miggle was. I was like, wait a minute, that's not a, that's not an invoker. Yeah. I was like, somebody's rotating, good stuff. That is actually very tough to deal with if you're a tinker. I mean what do you what is your out there? If you get cold snapped and you have two wolves hitting you, you just die. Yeah. Should he sentry up middle lane? Well, I, yeah, I think Earthshaker need to drop a sentry mid, and then RTZ hopefully could push oh, out. Oh, here comes again. the game on the mid lane. RTZ, oh, not going to get lasso back. He is going to be dead for sure. The TPs Stop. are coming a little bit too slowly. I think after the first gank that has happened, PPD just sits on mid lane and protect RTZ. Especially how the play style of EG goes, where Radiant's RTZ is a big part of the character. They're focusing attack. very heavily on him. And they, as they should. I mean... RTZ is such a, a good player that it demands that focus. Here's Bot lane though, here. Radiance First track kill of the game. Here comes Miggle though, he's got shapeshift on. There's a slope coming out as well. Poss does not actually have any detection at the moment. There's going to be oh. an Ion Shell and a Surge. He wants to continue Poss. chasing a Universe, but this is going to be fading a little bit soon. You're Poss safe. is going to be going down though in the meantime. Ooh. Oh, nice grave! He's dead regardless, I think. Yeah, he's Where's a heal? Nice. Poison Radiance touch? Is Fair going to die under the tower? He's going to go into the tower range, into the trees. And that'll be okay, there's no TP. Poison, Meanwhile, poison. on the back line here, Miggles Three. dropping low, Miggles dead. And the poison is not going to take him down. Uh, he was fine. <laughs> that was a close call. Where's the escape plan? Uh, the escape plan is yell at your team to push the wave really hard so he can actually get out of the tower range. I, feel, I, I don't know about this. Invis! Oh, he got it, he got it. <laughs> Nicely done, yeah. He used the phase boots to make sure that his invis was out of range of the tower by the time the auto attack goes off, because it will still disjoint, so... We yeah. Americans are not famous for having escape plans, but that was pretty well done. <laughs> we also ask for directions a lot. Radiance bottom tower we, or maybe that's attack. just a guy thing, I don't know. Yeah, that, I, I do that all the time. When I got here, I had to get on some underground train in the airport, and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. <laughs> asked some lovely Swedish girl, she showed me the way. Yeah. Did it go anywhere after that? No, you, that's well, what does that mean? I'm 
Ouch. Dirty bastard. I just gave you attack. a perfect segue to tell a story. That's true. But I wasn't gonna, was gonna lie. I wasn't yeah. gonna lie. Well, nobody would have known that you were lying. I would have known. Oh, oh man, the morals on this guy. Unbelievable. <laughs> the top we can see, uh, Sakshi's getting a little bit low here. Going against Zai. Uh oh, one another solo oh. assumption. He's actually gonna get the kill. <laughs> the solo kill from the visage onto the Batrider. I, I really like the way that EG has Dyer's been playing for the last uh, two, three attack. minutes. The, f the first key thing is as soon as you turn level six on Bounty Hunter, it doesn't matter if you're safe or lane or not, you get a gank. You get a free gank. Fata smoke. And not only that, he got two ganks in a row. Here comes Fata, smoked up, wants PP, did the cold snap though, not in range, but guess what? Bounty Hunter is in range and he's gonna go right on Fata. Fata takes you a ton of damage out to half HP. He's still chasing PPD, they want him dead, and I think they are gonna get him. Facebook. Crack speed, man. Oh man, the, oh, the poison, Radiant's poison. Kill was outside of experience range for so the invoker. Yeah, so far. I do like the movement though, because now they can see Miggle all the time. <laughs> nice, nice creep snipe there from Fear. Cheeky but boss. because of the fact that they're all on uh, Top lane, though. side of the map, <laughs> yeah. yep, he did. Very, very dead visage. Yeah, that's unfortunate. The cool thing with uh, Fear leaving the lane is it allows Zai to get Radiant's that level six and giving killed. him the experience to get that one solo kill himself. But yeah, it looks Fear like that right the courier as well inside of the yeah. woods. He's doing work here. There's a lot going on in this game. Yeah. Like, there's not a ton of kills like we saw the other day, but there's a lot of movement. There's courier snipes. It's just potential action could be happening everywhere. And, oh, man, there's going to be probably a dive here on the bottom lane. I think they that's a sentry it. ward that's being placed by the Radiant. Yeah, so they do oh, see yeah, Bounty see Hunter. Him. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem, like, is, Oops. the problem is you see him, but what are you going to do about it? Like, you don't actually have that give a lot down. In, though. Okay. Did they try to go for this? Uh, maybe an early fight. Nice he's gonna be there. Ooh, That's actually gonna land on Universe. He's gonna get dropped. Now they wanna go for PPD. PPD's totally out of mana. Track onto Fata just so they can run away a little bit faster. And there is a reaction from Zai. He's down here as well. Under attack. well. This is all just time that they're buying for their Tinker to try to recover like from the early game. So. Well, who's buying time for who, though? Right now, what I see Dyer's is Miggle forcing Glyph attack. on Tier 1, and they're gonna get this tower regardless, I think. Ah, uh, Kizzy's coming in. He's gonna do some damage. He probably wants to go for the deny. He's gonna force the shape shift. Tower is in deny range. Oh, siege unit. Oh, here yeah. comes uh, here comes Sakshka. Hey, that should that should yeah, guarantee the. Dyer's middle tower. Oh, he's coming in from fear fallen. regardless. Wait, wait. Was that the first tower of the game? And no one got it. Top tower yeah, yep. no one got it. Creeps won. First tower of the game. No one killed it. Creeps. Damn. I would have picked Creeps, but everybody loses. Everybody loses. What happened to that Valve's, Valve? Valve. Uh, Strat, where you, you know, you lose a very bad pub game, but you get our Arcana drops, like, yes! You know, everybody Dude, wins, right? that's how it worked. Oh, you you would have, like, 45 Arcana by I now. I really right? would. Yeah. At one stage, I had, like, a 45% win rate. If I could actually have, like, a dollar for every game that I've lost, where I've been, like, 20 and 2, it's not great, man. Double damage! I don't how you lose games when you're 20 and 2. Dude, ask Bruno. I lose spectacularly. Did we lose I'm every like game we played today? Nine of pub gamers. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Miggle in trouble. No shape shift. He's trying to run away from Fear. Here comes the ice blast, but gotcha. not going to make contact. So, Fear is going to be filthy rich. For I'm, I'm just going to say, Fear is probably one of the best bounty hunter I've ever seen. Like it, it just so to the T. Never actually farming lane after oh, level six. Dropped. He could be overextended nah, a tiny bit here. Look nah. at the damage. Wants to keep going, the cold beat's not gonna proc, he's behind enemy lines here, Fata in the meantime picks off Universe, great, gonna be you, Haas wants to be able to get away from this, Tracking but these up. supports, they can't Radiant's do anything, middle tower is under attack. they're just walking back and forth saying, no, what I'm supposed to do about this, and they're just giving away kills, so 7A right now, in favor of EG. Radiant's middle tower just is under attack. Just lost word how impressive this uh, bounty hunter is. This is just still farming in the top lane. This is a space creator, man, I'm telling you. Like all of a sudden, Artesia has bots and a soul ring and bottle. Like after what, like nine minutes, he didn't have anything. Yeah, that was a three consecutive ganks, two yeah. wolves ganks, and a bat rider that came in, and uh, old man fear creating a space. Humans. The thing is, though, to keep in mind is that even though he's technically making room for the tinker, and that's all well and good. They haven't gotten any map control really. They're kind of just sitting in their opponent's woods without killing any of the tier ones. Like bottom is still alive at around half health. Mid is pretty much in the same boat. Radiance and bottom yeah, tower top is, is under attack. more or less the same too. So no towers really being taken at all. It's just a lot of aggression and Fata buys uh, a very, very early gem or well, not him himself. Fucking that actually bought it for him, but he's carrying it. He's got a four staff too. And he's sick of this fair lot. Yeah. And the wolves as well, actually. Never mind. 
the next time Fear decides to play super cocky, he's going to be in for a surprise. Well, I think he should know that there is a... Well, now he knows, yeah. probably, because they're... The jigs up. They're doing that dewarding thing, and there's visage birds over there. Kill the birds. All this gold from the wars. Oh, Fear. He is in this. He's going to spot out uh, two of the supports from Sigma. Oh, necessarily, like what the game plan is necessarily for you because this isn't a hard carry like bounty is not a hero who is going to translate well into the ultra late game and Arteezy has had a very very bad time he's recovering yes. well but he hasn't really been involved in any of the action he's just idly farming he's not even pushing out the waves Radiant's he's just tower you know under sitting in the woods i mean the, now he's pushing but the way that uh cloud nine lost to eg when eg drafted this basic strat is to keep creating space the way that EG has been doing until your tinker gets so far out of control with blink hex dagons and then just have that tinker basically pop stop like I, I, don't, I don't have any better ways to say it so the tinker is the carry yeah tinker is actually the true carry i mean they look like they have team fight hero in the form of a dark seer and earthshaker but the way i remember it that game never had a team fight it was just easy killing people all over the place but okay. again the key thing is those tier one towers and they're still standing for sigma in fact sigma is applying pressure in terms of uh, tower control so i think sigma is playing this quite okay despite the fact that i think there was three or four track kills already given to uh eg uh Miggle's just gonna get his um his necro book i think he's actually going treads first which i mean the belt could be either way, mm -hmm. honestly, but we'll see what the choice is going to end up being. The thing with Tinker, though, is against a team with an Invoker, like, we saw what happened when he gets cold snapped. Yes. Yeah. There's really not a whole heck of a lot you can do about it, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him just go for something like a Force Staff instead of a Blink, just so he has an escape mechanism for that particular situation, because if anything arises where he gets hit and cold snapped, if he has a Blink, it's useless, because he's not going to be able to Blink away. But at least if you have a Force Staff or a Ghost Scepter, you can potentially avoid that ridiculous incoming damage. Yeah. So I don't know if he's going to have the freedom to really play that way, you know, like the way that you were saying that he played against Cloud9. And mm -hmm. by the way, the pause is actually uh, done. So we're going to be able to hop back inside of the game. But yeah, I have my, my doubts about how well he's going to be able to carry this just as a one-core tinker. So if I'm in Arteezy's position, I would totally agree with you. I would get the Force Staff. But that's because I don't have confidence in terms of my reaction and in control. Right. I, I think Arteezy is a caliber player that can't get away with the Blink Dagger. And if you have to choose between one or other, I think Blink is just better for a tinker in terms of precise yeah. and instant mobility. Yeah, I and mean, you can split push with it as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The other day, I think, uh, as we see, Ice Blast going on the bottom lane just to do a little bit of damage. Mego being forced back. The Fissure's going to hit Dying on Epi Mad. Oh, 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 it's oh, locked oh. it out, though. Epi Mad's Dying actually safe in the just choke one. He's going to go right on Fear. He's like, hold on a second. I'm fine. Nice. Yeah, the other day, I think Dendi played a Tinker against uh, Fata. Going in. EMP. But he's actually just going to back up. Doesn't want to try to go for it. But Fear, he's on the back line trying to hunt off one of these supports. I don't think he's going to find too much of anything. Yeah. There's just way too much de detection. Hunt if a tornado down. hits, that haste is going to get dispelled, and Fear might be in a little bit of trouble. I think he's going to be okay. Fata's going to run into this ward as well. Free ward? Yep. Yeah, this gem actually has done quite a bit. Not only has it uh, ward off the bounty hunter, and de ward a lot of Zai's precious place wards on the back line. Yeah, I really love the early gem. That is enormous against a team where, let's be honest, Fear has pretty much been the one making most of the room for Arteezy to recover. So by shutting that down and not giving Dyer's up your tier one, Sigma are playing attack. this, I think, exactly the way they need to to stay in the game. Yeah, pretty Radiant's pretty smart play uh, from, from Sigma. And there's a Blink Force Staff already up on the Bat Rider, so he's doing quite well. The we Necro really Books are coming use it that much, though. I Hopefully. think he got one gank on, yeah. on Tinker mid, and that's it, yeah. But this goes slowly and goes a long game. Do you say that it favors uh, Sigma a little bit more with the Lycan pick? I think it does, just because of the fact that the Lycan can punish a lot harder for winning team fights than EG's lineup can. I mean, the push comparison between the two, one team spams out waves, which is EG, and then the other team is able to actually kill the towers as soon as they get to him because they have a Lycan. So. In that regard, Radiant's it's very similar to what I would refer to attack. as like the tiny effect, where Radiant tiny just kills your base instantly as right. soon as you lose a fight. I think Sigma kind of have that going for them, and we're going to see a lasso on top. It's actually going to be on side. He's pulled behind the tower. Reaction coming in from EG. Looks like they want to try to pursue this at least a little bit. Bob is going to be taking quite a bit of damage. They desperately want that gem Radiant's off of them, but Visage does drop in the meantime. Tier 1 
Okay, to be secured. Fear manages to get it. Yeah. Oh, he's going to be. want to go for him. Nice birdies. tornado. The birds are going to get the kill. Oh, no. no one to pick up the gem. It looks like uh, EG are going to be able to take it back and Universe secures it. Dyer's structures. I think that was a crucial mistake for Sigma. I mean, they got the one pick off against uh, this. The visage and they lost the tower for that. Dyer's Either you retreat as a team or you fight as a team. And I, I think, think that was past TPing in and then he cancelled it at the last second. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, I think Invoker being the one caught out is so important because that gem is. We, we just talked about how, how vital it is for the team. Migo's gonna survive here in the mid lane. Shapeshift too strong, man. Yeah. Now that with the gem gone, it allows EG to continue to do what they've been doing, uh, which is, you know, controlling the map with the bounty hunter. I, I'm really surprised, actually, because even if that was a 4v4 and there was a cancelled TP, I can't imagine why the rest of the team would be just, you know, let's run right away without even, like, trying to help Fata. Because if I'm a support in that situation and I see my invoker who has a gem is about to die, I run in front of the other team and yes. say, take me, yeah. you know? I, I, just, I don't understand why no one helped him. There's also um, something to do with the gem. We can see the AA blast before it hits or something. Yes, that's an excellent point. We have true sight, you see the blast coming in? Yeah. He's grand. He's fine. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's close. That gem is pretty big. Like, huge for Sigma. That, well, yeah, it's, it's bad for them, and not only that, but now it's... Arteezy's Tinker gets an Aegis on top of that, and he's going for a Hex. He's already got the ultimate orb, and he did go Blink, so Lumi was right. He trusts himself enough to be in the right spots at the right time. Maybe I'm just like you, Lumi. Maybe I just, like, nope, don't trust myself. Just gonna buy a Force Staff. Here comes the last one. Fear top. Pause. Or, excuse me, uh, Sakshka and Niggle are both here. Sakshka didn't secure the kill. I mean, in an even worse situation, the other day, Dendi played his Tinker against a Spectre, and I was like, oh, this is a Force Staff game. Yeah. He just gone straight Blink, so... I mean, I, I guess you just go Blink all the time. <laughs> but uh, you, know, you want to shift Q it. It's like the fastest thing for the split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, it, it's actually just so good. I think they're trying to set up a gank career for Zion in the top lane. Lasso is on cooldown for 43 seconds, so I'm not sure how they're going to get this gank off, but... Here. Well, I mean, if he gets sticky a few times and Miggle pop shapeshift, I think it would be pretty easy. But looks like they're just going to go for the tier 1 instead, which is fine. Teleport coming in from RTZ. They want to try to go for Zai. Cancel TP and RTZ. Not going to be any backup for this poor Visage. He's going to teleport to the catapult in the back, but his teammate's going to be dead by the time he gets here. Now RTZ wants to try to fight this 1 versus 2. PPD is on the back lines, ready to throw a fissure if necessary. RTZ didn't actually cancel the TP. The terror died. Tower died, yeah. Mm -hmm. but it, it does yeah. cancel with bits of trouble. Yeah, okay. Meanwhile, Fata on the bottom lane. Looks like he's going to be going for a quick Orchid. He's trying to ghost walk past here. I think he is somewhat detected. By the way, is uh -oh. Gem online? Yeah, the Gem is online, and it's on Universe. Run. He's got a Force Staff. I think he's going to be fine. He's fine until the, the Hex comes out. That blank forward real. Hex. And yeah. It's all sadness, basically, from then on out. I mean, there is a couple answers for Sigma against Hexes. For example, the four staff on the Bat Rider is one way to, to deal with that. A uh, gray from Paws, and possibly a, just a like clutch tornado, you know, lifting everybody in air. Uh, that that would be good enough as well. But Sigma at this point in the game, they have a window about five minutes or so to do something big uh, before the hex comes online. Because once that hex comes online, I think it's it's very easy for EG to find random pickoffs and then just take tier one towers, tier two towers. So uh, Sigma needs to do something and do something soon. My question is, what is the game plan for them? I mean, they can potentially go for pickoffs on the Tinker because they have a bat, and they could just use AA ulti and Bat Rider ulti to just kill him straight sure. up. I think even just those two things would probably. Kill or just him a cold snap, like game. you said earlier. Yeah, I mean, a cold snap is nice, but it's kind of optimistic to think that you'll be able to do that without having some other form of initiation, you know? So you'll need, like, the backup to do so. Teleport coming in. RTZ is going to throw out some, some rockets and a missile. Or a laser, I guess. I mean, we're saying about ganking RTZ. RTZ is teleporting in front of his entire team. He does he just not like, care. Like, yeah, he just doesn't care. It's like, yeah. He still has the Aegis, in fairness. That's true. That's definitely true. Yeah, he knows they can't commit. And at this Dark stage, light. I think they're probably going to sacrifice this tier 1 teleport coming in. Sakshika is going to be the one. He does have that blink dagger if they want to try to Dyer's pursue this. But it's really attack. hard to blink in the yeah, how, how do you? How do you blink into the Tinker when you have two birds protecting him, a layer of march, the rockets coming forward, the track to give vision? Everyone get blade mail and run into it like heroes. It's a plan. Necro 3 is the one like him. That's pretty big. 
It is. Nice tornado. And it's coming out as well. Sai going to be losing the majority of his mana. Cold snaps there from Fanta as well. Lasso on the universe. Fisher actually missed. Here comes the Ice Blast. Lands on two. Fear and universe both in some trouble here. All of a sudden, Sigma having quite a bit of momentum during this fight. The panic echo slam from PPD. He's like, please get this wolf the heck off of me. Arteza coming in from the side, but he has absolutely no mana. And the wolf is trying to chase down Zai Miggle. He's dropping quite low as well. He's going to be trying to run, shift it, wears off. He's going to go for a wolf body block, perhaps. Arteezy just chasing him down. Sokka actually gets a kill inside of the base on Zai at the same time. And Miggle ends up going down as well. Book and Wolves chasing at Arteezy. Fear is chasing butt right on the top. Yeah, yeah he's got Firefly. He's got Firefly soon. Fly off, my friend. There is track, so he has complete vision. But off the map, he goes down. The birds could actually go off the map and keep chasing. Where's the blink? Use the blink, my friend. Oh, can they go off the map? Oh, my God. I guess they kind of can. Ice Blast. Oh, my God, Fear. So I think that team fight, we, we saw how mo mobile that Tinker with the Blink Dagger can be. He first picked off, I think it was Invoker on top of the river, and then he chased down the Lycanthrope, two of the very fastest here on Team Sigma. I think Team Sigma needs to actually just chase the Tinker down. Because yes, he has a Blink Dagger, but like we've been talking about, one Lasso, one Cold Snap, Dyer's one Ice Blast, any of these spells just could weaken him, disable that Blink, and pick him off. He's, he is so squishy at this point. There yeah. is that Asia, so it makes things a little bit more complicated. He's only 700 gold max as well. Yeah. That could change the game a lot, I think. I mean, who do you think won that team fight? As we see a backdoor attempt of these birds on the tier 1 tower. It's really hard to say, actually, who got the better of that exchange. Because that was just a very aggressive move from Sigma. Didn't get, like, anything massive out of it. The tier 2 got denied by PPD. And the glyph came out? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. That was... Well, they have uh, bounty gold there, so that's yeah. always a small advantage. I yeah, say I that's mean, a big advantage. You get the, the extra track gold, which is definitely good, but... Yeah, I guess, I guess AG came out ahead. Maybe including the aftermath of the fight, not just the fight itself. So Another what do you think Fear will go for here? He has his floods. BKB. Uh, BKB. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's been his kill. You, you go both gold drums and vlads. Oh, found fucking mad in the woods. Rockets? Rocket. I think oh, that... Oh, he did? Oh. He did? Oh, it is. Wow. It's, it's actually more Ooh, damage than I thought it was. It's 243. He's only an ice cream. He can't take too much shot. Rockets. Oh, here comes a hex. That's true. <laughs> One thing I noticed about RTZ, the way Radiant's he plays his Tinker, is that he attack. actually does take level 3 rearm. There is a build that you just don't take rearm just for the sake of having... You get like two points. Yeah, more manageable mana. Yeah. But uh, this man, he could manage his mana. He so. has the Hex. If you have a Dagon, it's kind of different. Like I hex. mean, even with the Hex, sometimes you leave it at level yeah. two. Like, it just it soaks up so much of your mana. Oh, man, he's smoked up top, and he has the Hex, too. There you go. Fata's... What? Just a drops a ball. casual meatball and walks away. Yeah. It's like, all right. And he's cross wax as well, so probably does like two damage. Nice awareness, though. Unfortunately for Fata, like, I, I really like Orchid on, on Invoker. I just don't think this particular organ is going to have much impact in this game. I think that he's getting the Orchid not just for the silence effect, but because he realizes that having some more physical damage for the team isn't necessarily a bad thing, because Miggle is the only source of it as it stands right now. Yep. And if you cold snap Orchid somebody, like on EG, they can't do anything about it. I mean, even Darkseer, for example, I mean, he's probably one of the tankier ones. He, he's got a four staff. Yeah, I mean, he's got a four staff, but no one else can really do anything but him. To be fair, like, there's a lot of pseudo damage coming up from Sigma with things like Touch and Touch and How. So, the team that does actually right click pretty hard in the in the right circumstances, but we haven't really seen that yet. And Necrovokes always increase your right click damage. Yeah. So. Blacks. Yeah. yeah they, they actually do have uh, some right click damage. I think at this point, Fata, when he sees the birds, uh -oh, it's time to get out. Oh no, he thinks he's doing these cool stuff. Oh, but here comes the tank. What? I blink backwards. Oh. He's not gonna go in. And uh, with the ghost walk, I think Fata is fully expecting this. Yeah, he is. And that's what you call, I believe. Yep. He's got more than enough, actually. The birdies. Well, now he knows that there's a sentry there, because the birds just attacked him, and Sakshika is going to get a little bit of that treatment as well. But EG are doing a really nice job of maintaining the map control right now. It's important for them to keep the waves off their side of the map, just in case any team fight does go awry. That's just a strength that having a tinker is ensuring that there's always going to be lanes that have to be pushed out after an engagement. So being able to keep the map positioned this way for EG, it's always going to be their advantage. Especially against a Lycan, who can just like destroy everything in seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I think right now, both Fata as well as Sok, it's been constantly trying to find that Tinker. 
Uh, well, they, they do find him now, but the Blink Dagger coming on the backside. Sog just gets blown up because of those Visitors. The Ice Blast does hit Arteezy down to about half HP. I think he's actually going to go down here. He doesn't have Aegis or anything. Try to, oh, he does get a Hex off before Diamond. Here comes Universe as well as PB, as well as Fear. The track's going to go on. Pasta's dropping low. No grave. Big dunk coming out from the Earthshaker. They do get a couple more kills. And I think EG handily wins that team fight. Tinker comes right back after a buyback. He wants more. The Blink or the Hex. Fata is so fast with that face and Wex. Yeah, and Arteezy actually blinked the wrong way. It was nighttime, so he didn't have vision of Fata running straight back to the Tier 2. I think he was probably going for the extra kill, but at the very least, they're going to be able to get a Tier 2 here, I think. There's only two heroes alive. Nice Tornado coming out from Fata, doing still a reasonable amount of damage. And there's three birds out Radiance because the egg is on this side, so. Yeah, that's when Fear rotated and gave farm to the Visage early in the game. That's going to hurt, man. Yeah. That Ice Blast. Grand. Yeah, so, I Radiant's mean, EG doesn't have a carry, attack. but all these fights are taking, they're not actual true team fights, right? It's very scrappy, it's back and forth, and I think that really favor heroes such as Bounty Hunter, Radiant's Visage Burst that are everywhere, and more attack. importantly, a Tinker with a Blink Dagger. Because in, in a true 5 v team fight, you want things like big AoE spells like Vacuum and, and Tornado and Ice Blast and all that Radiant's stuff. But when it's one fight here, one fight there, you really want the Blink Tinker. And that Blink Tinker is... He's everywhere. Yeah, he's everywhere. doing so much work. I think that was about as close to a full-on 5 on 5 as we've gotten this whole game. Yes. So, with that being said, they did manage to isolate Arteezy pretty quick, and he bought back, and it, honestly it was a bit of a waste, because they didn't really get anything, particularly yeah. out of the oh, buyback, and Poss just good night, man. You are not getting away from... Oh, maybe he will. Wow, Arteezy didn't fully totally commit. Maybe he was just worried that they were more behind the... The Ice Blast. More behind Poss, yeah. That scare tactic, man. Worked out. he would actually go for that but i would have went for it i would have the blood would have been just rushing to yeah, my head the bloodlust you're yeah. just like get the kill That's probably why i'm bad at dota it's easy to get caught up in the moment man happens to the best of us oh, roshan's up again yep the scoutings are coming out from wolf but uh fair does have that gem available so they can invisibility i mean I think this is something that you said once uh, before. Like, when you have a Mexican standoff at the Roshan pit like that, the team with Tinker, Firion is Black a team Lighter. that's... Never well, with a, with a global push, I guess, is a team that's yeah, you know, yeah. eventually favored. You apply the pressure yeah. and force them to rotate. The issue lies in the team that has better mobility is always going to win out in a long enough duration most of the time. Oh, PPD getting caught out though. He's going to eat the lasso and the orchid. Now they want to try to go on Fafi. Four steps away. Vacuum hits on two. Poss with a very, very early grave. Here pops the BKB. He's continuing to chase. He wants something mad. The rockets though are going to be able to steal the kill. Arteezy gets a double in the meantime. Fata being chased down. Here comes Sakshka. Can they stop Fear from chasing down this invoker? Here comes the blink hex. It's a triple for Arteezy. He's going for more. He doesn't have really any mana left whatsoever. And it's going to be Universe who actually gets the last and that is a complete team wipe. Would you call that a team fight? Oof. I mean, it was a team something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was necessarily a fight. I mean, like I mean they they went all in on PPD of everyone. Maybe they were just concerned that they couldn't get a good initiation on well, RTZ because they of the can't find RTZ. Yeah, I mean Radiance Middle okay, Tower. Okay, he's been positioned well. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. But they even had a ward on the high ground. As soon as you try to commit to a fight, like, send somebody else in Radiance first besides the bat. Has like, I don't think the bat can be the first one to initiate unless he sees the tinker. Radiance yeah. middle tower is under attack. The problem, Arteezy hasn't been seen. He's, he's, he's playing well, he's positioned well, now he's got a Dagon. The strength of this lineup is also something that we haven't discussed, is how well they chase with a single Peace. track. The vision's there, the rocket's gonna be coming in, the blink dagger from the, 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 birds, the birds as well. Yeah, it's just, it's just so much. I, I think in the last team fight, I really would have liked to see a Yules on the Invoker much more. Because he tried to get away, but the track is constantly on him. Yules yeah. is something that could dispel it if you want to use it. You could they have a gem though. Yeah, but just the track, the track. Speed. yeah, you can't go into the If you ghost walk now and you're not tracked, you'll still run faster than them, even if you uh, even if they have a gem. Like they can see you but they can't catch you. Yeah. Yeah, looks like another uh, free Roshan here for EG. This is very refreshing, like, going into 32 minutes into the game and saying, hey, we don't have a single true hard carry, but through pickoffs, Roshan kills, and one only track kills, they're hanging along, they're just fine. In fact, if we look at the gold, at about 7,500. Yeah, experience is looking at it to be about the same. The graphs are actually almost identical, it's kind of weird. 
But that just goes to show how close the game has been up until this point. That one Dyer's particular fight that we just saw that ended up being a team wipe in favor of EG is kind of where the momentum, I think, is going to start to change. Because now, Sigma are kind of in this panic situation where they want to really try to go for something. And Dyer's I don't know if they're going to find the opening attack. they're looking for. Over to Dagon now for that burst damage. Yeah, just got for, Dagon too. For does passes looking good for the, wait, who has the that's the GPM? I don't remember what key it is. Let's see. I can't there we go. Oh. So five fifty. Was it was it you for you? Yeah. Yeah, I had to rekey them. Like a GPM's G for me. So it, yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. I should, have, cool. I should have done that at some point. But honestly, I don't spectate my own games that I cast anymore. I only do it for this because... Um, oh, oh what a bait. Yeah, we're gonna find him. He's gonna get Orchid. He doesn't have an Aegis. He's gonna be able to get the Hex oh, off on fight. Fata. There's quite a bit of damage oh, before he goes down. The birds might be able to secure it, but Fata, he four staffs away. And they're not gonna be able to, uh, to get the kill that they were looking for with the birds. But that's a big pick, like getting RTZ off the map for 90 seconds. He used buyback yeah. as well, so they yeah. have a, a lot I mean, of time. As good as that pick was, keep in mind that Sigma had looked for that pick for the past 10 to 15 minutes. Like this Bat Rider and this Invoker has been constantly walking around. Yeah, they got a pick, but what are you really going to do for 90, 90 seconds when the Creep Galibrium on all three lanes are pushed on your side? There's no Roshan to take because it's done. You're just gonna push out the lane, and guess what? Round two, when the Tinker's back alive, it's, it's gonna happen again. So, good pick. How much does that really accomplish? I'm not sure. Double no, I, I'm agreeing with you. I just think that it's better than nothing. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. If they didn't kill him, it would have just been slow suffering, and they probably would have gotten asphyxiated by just getting pushed in every single lane and not being able to really take an engagement. But Miggle's not got his BKB. And he has Book on top of that with his Medallion and his Vlad, so he's getting a, a pretty decent chunk of farm. The only issue is they don't have any map to really use. It's kind of they're sitting on their side of the map, and the only gank that they've been able to execute, like you said, has been that one on RTZ. So buying time, not sure it's really going to work out at this point. The supports really are, are kind of becoming the uh, Achilles heel for Sigma because they're dying to the Bounty Hunter and the Tinker Rockets every single fight. Yes. So it's we made this comparison of which team Radiant's really has the better carry potential, but attack. it doesn't matter who has the better carry if the rest of the, the team can't hold their own, yes. you know? And as, can't a, live. as a contrast, if you look at the supports on EG side, the birds, Radiant's not the hero, Visage has been attack. doing so much not by not being there. Meanwhile, it looks like we are going to find a pick on the side. Guy's being dragged up on the high ground. He's there, but he's not really dying. Guess what? Tinker's back alive. So I don't Radiant's think you want to take any extended team fight. Oh. Happy Mac gets tracked, and he's like literally dead now. Like it doesn't matter where he go unless he goes back to well, he's dead. And there we go. Well, he's going to go back to the well, just not necessarily the way he wanted to go. Oh, the Miggle, the big dog. Go he's going on Fear, pops the BKB. Shuriken going to get the kill on AA. Now Fear on the run, trying to get out, but there is a book 3 4 detection, and Arteez is going to be able to kill Fata in the meantime. Pop he's got also drops, yep. Aegis now pops, will be respawning in just a second. No one else tracked Tinker's up just coming. yet. He really wants to go for it. Yeah, he's teleporting in on one of the uh, many, many random little things that are around here. I don't know if it was a wolf or if it was a bird or it was what. A bird. The wolves are under. Yeah. The way or I no, see I meant, uh, I meant the. Um, wait, what did I mean? I don't know what I meant. You, you necro book maybe? I'm you got confused. Yeah. <laughs> no, the the book is on the like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think really Sigma could only win a team fight if they could win it quick. Because as long as these team fights are going longer and longer, it just gives more time for Tinker to go back to base, get mana, come back. And EG is very well equipped to fight long drawn out team fights with things like bounty tracks, giving everyone mobility, the birds flying everywhere, the multitude of four staffs and mechs uh, to keep everybody else alive. So, one needs to find that one big EMP tornado ice blast and call it a day. And if not, these team fights will keep going the way they are going. Is that what you say if you're fucking out here? That's what you say to your team. We need yes. To... But the problem is their team can't do that. Like, you don't have a lunar eclipse or a vacuum meteor. I just don't think EG will be caught. And the way that they've been playing, they're never caught as five. In fact, they're splitting up and farming all over the place. I'm a bit concerned, really, what their game plan is supposed to be, because their their invoker went cross wax, right? So he doesn't really do a lot of damage with meteor combos. He's been level 17 for like five minutes, ten minutes now. Yeah, it's it's really difficult though, because they need to leave the map really for Miggle to farm, 
and other heroes need farm too. So when you're kind of just stuck on your side of the map and you're trying to recover, you're not getting as much as the other team because EG can farm their jungle, they can continue to push, they can farm even Sigma's jungle because Sigma can't fight them. So all they have to do is aggressively position themselves and then all of a sudden Sigma just have to sit in their base. I mean, it's, it's not a good spot to be in. When this day gone, that's coming into play as well. Oh my god. It's level four now. Almost Nearly level five. five. A lot of zapping that's going to happen is just not great. And the problem is, heroes like the Dazzle, like Poss, he pretty much insta dies to. Yeah. Even though he's an Urn on threads, which is yeah. pretty. Like, he will instantly die to Laser Rocket Dagon. Yeah, as long as there's a track on him, they don't even have to focus him to kill him early. It's just as long as track is on there, eventually he'll just die to some rocket, some form of Blink Hex Dagon. It's sad life, but you can't get trapped. Yeah, it's, um, it's not great if you're a support, really, for Sigma. This is the team that really just eats the supports, though. And I think it's a really clever draft by EG in that sense, Radiant's because as I said, like, attack. Dazzle and AA, they don't stand up to Bounty Hunter and Tinker Rockets. Like, you just, mm -hmm. you can't be in a good position ever what against supports these types would you, of heroes. What you have in, the, in this case? Well, I mean, it's not necessarily about what supports you would oh, pick, it's about what style of team you're going to want to go for. And yeah, top. Miggle. He's in a bit of trouble here. They're going to eat the vacuum wall on top of everything else. It's going to be a double kill for Universe, so RTG coming in. Yeah, the birds were here to help out too. So, yeah, that, that's that's really painful. I think they could just go ahead and snowball this into a tier 2 if they wanted to, but instead they're going to kill the tier 2 bottom instead. Yeah. And RTG is going to be joining the... Uh, he leaves the birds to, help to do the... Yeah. Get both. Top We're not both. Has I mean, it, it, I, get I don't it. think it's a, a, a. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's actually just game. Dire victory. I uh, I understand. There was kind of the sense of they couldn't ever get out of. Yeah. You know, out the, of the up run. until 15 minutes when they got the gem, they were they had a, a bit more in control. And then w the, the uh, Volker lost the gem top, and all of a sudden it was just like. It was the gem and tier one towers. I think yeah. they only lost one tier one top. Uh, after they lost the gem, everything kind of just collapsed.